had a good day today, and I'm glad you could join us tonight. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 12, and we're going to read through verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. Let's pray, and we'll get started. Father God, we come to you tonight, and I thank you for these words. I pray that they'll be a good reminder to us of how much you love us, dear Lord, that they would remind us of your grace and your mercy. God, I pray that they would remind us about how great you are and how wretched we are, dear Lord, that as sinners we are in need of your grace and mercy. And I pray, God, that we would uh, just confess our sins to you, dear Lord, that we would repent. God, that we would be aware of our sinfulness, but we would also be aware of the forgiveness that comes through you. And I pray that you'd be glorified in these words tonight. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Now, these are words written by Paul. Paul wrote most of what we call the New Testament. Uh, and, and here in these verses, Paul is telling a young man by the name of Timothy a little bit about his story. Paul is saying, look, here's where I was and here is where I am now. Through Jesus. Now, Timothy was a young man, a man who uh, had a good upbringing by a Christian mom and a Christian grandma. Paul even points that out, and he is preparing Timothy for the ministry. He's telling Timothy, okay, let me encourage you. Let me give you some instruction. Let me teach you and show you what's important about the gospel and how to continue the work that I've been doing. Now, Paul is what we would call an evangelist or a missionary. Uh, what he did would have looked in some ways similar to what we see evangelists and missionaries doing today. Uh, he traveled all around to all these different cities and all these different places, and everywhere he went, he preached the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was the Son of God, that there is salvation in none other but Jesus. And boy, he went around and, and, and uh, preached this truth to people anywhere he could, there were churches that were popping up. There were a group of Christians all over. And these letters that Paul wrote in the New Testament uh, were letters that he was writing back to these different places, to people that he encountered, to churches that had been planted, to leaders that were there, to friends who he had left behind that he was hopefully going to get to see again one day. And maybe letters of encouragement, maybe letters of instruction, maybe letters to condemn some behavior that was going on. But these letters that we see in the New Testament, most of which were written by Paul, uh, were written to other brothers and sisters in Christ that he uh, had, uh, had ministered to throughout his uh, time of the, uh, the journeys he went on in teaching and preaching the truth of the gospel. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, he says, I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, appointing me to the ministry. Now, Paul is thankful for what he is doing now. He is doing something he loves. He is serving Jesus Christ who has saved him from his sinfulness. And he's saying, look, I thank God because God considered me faithful. He saw it, he saw it good to appoint me to the ministry so that I could serve him. And Paul is saying, Thank the Lord for that. Now, the reason why Paul is so thankful that he is able to serve the Lord, that he has experienced the grace of Jesus Christ, is because of where Paul came from. Now, we see through Scripture that, that Paul was a man who was definitely full of the Spirit, a man who loved the Lord, and a man who was faithful to serve the Lord. But that was not always the case in Paul's life. Let's read a little further. Verse 13 one who was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man. But I received mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul says, I was one who was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man. Before Paul became probably the greatest evangelist and missionary that's ever been, apart from Jesus Christ, he was one who would seek out Christians. He would try to find them wherever they would so that he could persecute them, so that he could imprison them. Uh, when one Christian in the early church in uh, the book of Acts, toward the beginning of the book, uh, there was one man by the name of Stephen, and he was one appointed, and he was preaching and teaching the truth of the gospel, pointing people to Jesus, and they refused to hear the message. And as the people stoned him, it says that all of the ones stoning Stephen placed their coats at the feet of Saul, whose name later became Paul. Now that story is, uh, is a good story to help us see 
uh, just how, how wicked Paul was. He was in a bad way. He hated Jesus. He did not believe the truth of the gospel. He thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. Uh, he was a, a Pharisee among Pharisees. He knew the Old Testament law, but he did not understand what God's word really said until one day when Jesus Christ appeared to him. And then his eyes were opened, and then he understood the truth, and then he recognized that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was the Savior. And in that moment, Paul put his faith in Jesus, and his life was transformed. He went from one who was persecuting Christians to one who his only goal was to make Christians, was to make followers of Jesus Christ. He says, look, I was this way. I was this arrogant and this proud and this, this, this man who blasphemed Jesus and who persecuted Christians. But, he says, I received mercy. I received mercy and the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Now, he made a complete 180. His life completely turned around. He was going down a path that led to destruction. He was uh, going down a path of sin. But Jesus appeared to him and changed his life. Once he saw the truth and put his faith in Jesus, he then experienced mercy. He experienced grace. He experienced the forgiveness of his sins and the love that comes through Jesus Christ. And he realized instantly that the love of Christ was far better than the sinful lifestyle that he was living. Let's read a little further. Verse 15. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. Now, Paul doesn't pretend to be something that he is not here. He said, look, listen to this. This is true. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I want to tell you today that I am the worst. Now that's, pretty, that's a pretty bold statement right there. Here's Paul, a man that we see love the Lord, whose faith was strong in the Lord. And here he is being transparent and admitting, look, this is who I was. This is what I came from. I was a sinful man living a sinful lifestyle, doing sinful things, completely rejecting Jesus. But then when I saw Jesus, when my eyes were open and I saw the light, at that moment I experienced mercy and I experienced grace. I experienced forgiveness. I experienced who Jesus was. And he says, look, Christ came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them. Now, we need to, uh, to acknowledge that truth in our life. We might like to think that we are, we are something special, that we are good, that we are holy. But apart from Jesus Christ, we are not good. We are not holy. We are not righteous. We are just like Paul was. Apart from Jesus Christ, we are wretched sinners. And even when we come to Jesus Christ, guess what? There is still sin that creeps up in our life. There are still things that come. There are still temptations that come. There are still times that we give in to those temptations. But praise the Lord that the grace and the mercy that saved Paul is the same grace and the mercy that can save us. And even when we've been saved by that grace and mercy, it's the same grace and mercy that can forgive us when we repent, when we recognize, God, I am a wretched sinner. God, you are here. You are the, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And God, I am down here. I am as worthless as the dust. I am a sinner deserving of no grace and mercy. God, I've done nothing to deserve your love, but God, I come to you and I ask you for it. I ask you to open my eyes so that I can see the light, so that I can experience your grace and mercy, so that I can experience the peace of forgiveness. Let's read a little further in verse 16. But I receive mercy for this reason, so that in me, the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now here Paul says, look, I am the worst of sinners. I'm the worst of sinners. Now think about those things that Paul did. Now we don't see in the scripture anywhere that it says Paul actually murdered Christians, but he was part in, in, in having Christians brought in so that they could be murdered. He was there cheering people on as Christians were murdered. He was, his main goal was to seek out Christians and persecute them in any way that he could. He was not a good guy. 
He was an evil guy. He was a wicked guy. But yet Jesus loved him enough that he still forgave him. Now I want you to think about your own life. I want you to think about the things you do. Well, we've got them. I do the same thing. I think about my life and the things that I do. Even as a Christian sometimes, I do things and I think, boy, God, I really blew it. I think, boy, I'm, I'm ashamed of the way that I've done this or I've done that. The things that may have come into my mind, the things that may have come out of my mouth. There are things that we do and we may not want to admit those things. But we don't have to pretend that we're perfect. Even for Christians, for sure, we don't pretend that we're perfect. Even as one who's in the ministry myself, I can't stand here and pretend that I'm perfect. And if you watch this video or ever see me preach and think that I am, then I hate to burst your bubble. But man, I am full of problems. I'm a wretched sinner. I do things that I wish I wouldn't do. I pray that God would help me to do better, and oftentimes he does. But boy, there are a lot of things that I do that I'm ashamed of. And we are all probably in that same boat as Paul. We could probably all call ourselves the worst of sinners. We could begin to compare our list with Paul's and say, boy, Paul thought he was bad, but look at what I did. We all are wretched sinners. But we serve a wonderful Savior in Jesus Christ who can forgive our sins and will if we put our faith in him. Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Paul said, look, I was the worst of them, but in this... Christ Jesus was able to demonstrate his extraordinary patience. Now think about that for a second. The extraordinary patience of Jesus Christ. Think about all the stuff that we do. Think about the stuff that you do. I think about the stuff that I do and I think, boy, if I was God, I probably would have zapped me years ago. I'd have probably struck lightning down and struck, and struck me years ago. But God doesn't do that to us, even though we may be deserving of that sometimes. God is extraordinarily patient with us. That's what Paul says here. Jesus, in his extraordinary patience, he delivers us. He puts up with more of us than he should because of his grace and because of his mercy. He gives us an opportunity to be forgiven so that we don't have to spend an eternity condemned. Now, we think that, that God is, is delaying his coming, and we think that God doesn't care because of things we see that happen in the world. But Paul points it out here, and even in another point in Scripture, where it tells us that, look, God is not delaying in his promise. God is not delaying to fulfill what needs to be fulfilled. But God is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. God allows a lot of things to happen in this world. Well, if you and I were God, we'd probably have already done a lot of things and cleaned this world up, right? But we're not God. God is extremely patient. He shows extraordinary patience. If you've not come to Jesus Christ to put your faith in him tonight, then he's still showing you patience. He's still giving you that chance. You still have air in your lungs. You still have an opportunity to repent. Maybe you're his. Maybe you've already put your faith in Jesus Christ, but there's still sin in your life. Well, God's still allowing you to live. He's still giving you a chance to repent. He's still showing you patience. Even if you're His, He's still patient with you. And we need to be reminded that God is patient with us. Not because we deserve it, but because of His grace and mercy. Not because we deserve it, but because He loves us. Now, Paul recognized the significance of this. Paul recognized that God was amazing and that he was nothing but a wretched sinner. And we need to recognize that same truth. God is amazing, and we are sinners. We are not worthy of God's love, but that's where his grace comes in, because he gives us what we are not worthy of. 
And he gives us that through Jesus Christ. Paul says, look, I thank God because of the grace that I received through Jesus Christ, that even though I was living in darkness, Jesus came to me and I saw the light. And boy, my life turned around. And I went from living a sinful life to living a glorious life in Jesus Christ. Paul says, I was the worst of sinners, but now I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I want to tell you that God can forgive your sins today. The Bible is full of people that did some pretty rotten things, some pretty horrible, wicked people. But for those who have faith in God, for those who repent, for those who trust in Jesus Christ, their life can be turned around in the same way as Paul's was. You can hear this word of God tonight and you can put your faith in Jesus Christ and you can go from being a sinner living under the burden of sin to being a sinner saved by grace, living in the joy of Jesus Christ. We can read God's word and hear God's word being wicked people, but boy, when it speaks to us and we repent, we can be made clean, we can be made righteous, we can be made whole through Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Paul says, I give thanks to God because he turned my life around. And even though I'm a wretched sinner, he forgave me. And that's the same, the same prayer that God wants you to pray. That's the same praise that God wants you to give. He wants you to pray to him and say, look, God, I'm a wretched sinner and I repent and I come to you, mighty God, and ask for the forgiveness that only comes through Jesus Christ. And when you do that, he'll forgive you. And as Jesus said to follow through in baptism, those are his uh, to be baptized and follow his example. I hope today that you're following Jesus Christ. I hope today that your sins have been forgiven. But if you haven't trusted Jesus, I'm going to tell you your sins haven't been forgiven. But they can be this very night if you confess your sins and trust Jesus. And you can, you can praise God tonight in the same way that Paul does. Saying, thank you, God, that you turned my life around. That you led me from being a wicked sinner to being a, a, a sinner saved by grace through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, we come to you tonight, and I thank you for these words. And I pray that you would help us just to recognize how great you are and how wretched we are. Dear Lord, help us to be honest about where we are, where we come from, what we struggle with. Dear Lord, you already know our hearts. You know our thoughts. And so, God, we don't have to pretend like we're holier than thou and we're uh, somehow super righteous, dear Lord, because we're not. We're just wretched sinners, just like Paul. We do some horrible things and we think some horrible things, dear Lord. And I pray that you convict us so that we're not proud of those things, so that we are ashamed of those things and that we know that we can be forgiven of them, dear Lord. Don't let us just be ashamed of our sin, but help us to repent of our sin, to be encouraged in the fact that Jesus Christ gave his life so that we can be forgiven. God, if there's one that does not know that truth tonight, I pray that they would trust Jesus. I pray that you would help us that already follow Jesus, God, to uh, not, not allow our sin to get us down, dear Lord. Your forgiveness is great. And God, yeah, we blow it big sometimes, dear Lord. We sin in great ways, but God, your grace is still great. And I pray that you help us to never uh, forget that truth. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service. To learn more about Jesus, call or text Pastor Shan at 601-657-0180 or email him at shanvn at me.com. You can also visit us at www.enterprisebaptist.church or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Liberty. We hope that you have been blessed by today's service.